Hi, and welcome to the 10 Minute Book Talk, where three best selling authors talk all things bookish with you for 10 short and sweet minutes. I'm Rachel Linden, and I'm joined today by Marie Bostwick. And Catherine Ray usually is with us, but she is working on a big project. And so we are delighted to welcome back as a guest host, Julie Cantrell. Yay. Yay, thanks for being with us, Julie. <laughs> and today we have the distinct and delightful pleasure of talking with Christy Woodson Harvey about her new book. The Wedding Veil. Christy, thank you for being with us. We're so excited that you're here. I loved this book. I took it on vacation. And we're so happy to chat with you today. So can you give us just a brief synopsis about what is what the story is about? Yes. And oh my gosh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be with three of my favorite authors. This is just such a joy. I've been so looking forward to it. Um, yeah, so The Wedding Veil is my first historical contemporary novel, so something a little bit new for me. Um, and so in the historical part of the story opens in 1914 when George Vanderbilt has just died. Um, he was the man who built Biltmore Estate and leaves behind his young widow, Edith, and his young daughter, Cornelia. And so it's really um, starts off as the story of these two women um, really endeavoring not only to keep up this massive house and, you know, the land and the town that's really sprung up around it, um, but also to maintain um, George Vanderbilt's legacy. But when they start to have differing opinions about what that looks like and what that means, um, the story begins to change just a little bit. So um, in the present day, um, I have a grandmother and granddaughter, Babs and Julia, and Babs is putting this heirloom wedding veil on um, her granddaughter's head. And Julia realizes like in an instant that she's not going to be able to stay married to the man she's about to walk down the aisle to. And she is going to be the one to sully the name of this good luck family wedding veil and she can't do it. And so um, at the center of the story is this um, sort of mysterious wedding veil. And um, it's really just a story about each of these women's journey to find a new path in sort of extraordinary circumstances that they're each facing. Love it. Well, Christy, you know, I love you and I love this I story. <laughs> I'm so glad to see you today. Um, so nice to see. I love this story. I love everything about it. I love Asheville. I love everything about the Vanderbilts. I'm fascinated by the history, but the way you tie it all together with the veil is brilliant to me. But I'm curious to know what was something interesting you learned when you were researching the story? Because I know you did a good bit of research for it yeah. too. You know, oh my goodness. So, so many things. I think the thing that shocked me the most was um, just the nature of journalism during that age. So the book really mm -hmm. takes place during 1914 to 1934, but of course there are flashbacks, you know, from these women's lives that, you know, you're seeing in there. Um, but when I was doing the research for this, I was so surprised, you know, I knew there were gossip columns, Charlie Knickerbocker was like a big thing then. And, but I was surprised at how the, the newspapers, not even in the gossip columns could sort of just make things up. <laughs> and so that was a little bit challenging at the beginning because I had to figure out, you know, what was fact and what was fiction. And, um, but you know, at the same time, it's a novel, it's fiction. So there were some things that I was like, I don't know if that's true, but that makes a good story. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think the other thing that really, really surprised me is I expected to write a story about Edith and George Vanderbilt and this kind of marriage of convenience that they had. I mean, it was a very typical marriage of that day where he had a ton of money, but you know, a newer family name. She did not have a lot of money. Her family was in kind of a bad financial situation, but she had one of the oldest. I mean, she was a fish, a Stuyvesant and a dresser. Like you could not get better than that. Um, and so I just thought, you know, this was a marriage of convenience and they lived this sort of jet set lifestyle. But the more I researched them, the more I decided that I don't know if it started that way, but I think they really had a true love story. Just the way she fought for him, you know, long after his death and the links that she went to to preserve his legacy just sort of changed my mind about their story. So that was kind of cool. Awesome. And perfect for fans of the Gilded Age right now, yeah. like tying all that. Oh, in. yeah. yeah. <laughs> they just say. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny because when they're talking about people on there, um, I'm like, oh, I know them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all those names. Yeah, it's it's fascinating. Plus, I love Babs. I have to say, I just love Babs. Oh, <laughs> story. She got her own. Oh, yeah. She's <laughs> well, I'm the odd man out because, you know, um, Rachel and I live pretty close, but I have not yet been able to wrestle the art. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm so sorry. I kept it I'm, long. I'm oh, sorry, week. I haven't seen. <laughs> no, we were gonna share one, and I just went on vacation with it, and basically cheated Marie out of the option. I, you will get it. Marie. You will get it. You will love it, and it will be good. I'm having over this afternoon, so. <laughs> I can't wait to read this, but I am really curious. I'm always really curious, you know, writers we were like, what was that spark of inspiration with this story? What, like, was there something you read or saw or heard that you went, that's a novel? Well, it started out with one of those things. I'm sure this has happened to all of us at some point in our lives where I was at Biltmore and I'd been there plenty of times before, but it was the first time that I'd been there that I just got so interested in Edith Vanderbilt and, and the links that she went to, to save Biltmore. And, you know, this is 1914. I mean, women can't even vote. And she was left in um, a not ideal financial situation, which I really didn't know. I mean, she certainly wasn't destitute, but she was in no way, shape or form able to take care of the largest home in America. Um, at least not until her daughter turned 25 because her daughter was the recipient of um, basically what was left of George Vanderbilt's fortune. Um, and it, she didn't get it for 12 years after he died. So I thought, how, like, how did she do this? And I just started like looking and, um, you know, researching and trying to find out more about her. And I kept saying, someone should write a book about her. Someone should write a book about her. And um, a couple of years later, actually, I was, I got the idea for this book called The Wedding Veil. And it was going to be about this heirloom veil and all the women who had worn it, kind of inspired by this veil in my husband's family that um, so many women had worn, including myself and uh, my cousin and my sister-in-law and some friends. And um my agent said, you know, you should write about a real wedding veil. And I was like, no, like I'm, there's no, I, I don't write historical fiction. There's no real wedding veil I'm going to want to write about. And I just did this like really quick cursory Google search on um, Edith Vanderbilt's wedding veil and found this great story about this family heirloom veil that was worn by Edith and her mother and her sisters and her daughter Cornelia. And then it disappeared. And I just thought, well, that is the perfect setup for a historical contemporary novel is, you know, what happened to the missing Vanderbilt Vale. And so um, she was right as usual. And um, <laughs> I started researching and um, just became really enthralled by these women and their stories. It's amazing. That's really, you know, it is, it is that moment when you go, aha, that's the best part. Of it's writing. The, it's the best. It's the best. <laughs> Um, and I, you know, not having ever written historical fiction, I'd never really, well, that's not true. And I think th there was a, there is someone that I do want to write about. And I had kind of one of those moments and I thought, I want to, I want to tell this story one day, but I know it won't be for a long time because it's just really in depth research and something that it will take me a few years to write, I think. But so I had the idea that maybe I would write something historical one day, um, but I wasn't expecting I wasn't expecting to do this. So meant to be. And I think it'll be your next New York Times bestseller. Another one of oh. your belts. I, I hope so. Well, from your mouth to God's ears. Too. I don't know. It's my first course. hardback. And um, it's a, wow, it's a big week. There's so many great books coming out. Um, and anyway, I'm grateful to be in their company and um, whatever happens, happens. So. You did a great job. It's a well, great book. What we know is going to happen is that readers are going to absolutely love the strong women. And it's not just one strong woman. That's what I adore. I adore stories about strong women. And I love how many strong women find their own paths and get their own stories in this. So if you like strong women, if you like history, if you like weddings, if you like happy endings, <laughs> if you like sort of anything that brings us joy, <laughs> The Wedding Veil by Christy Woodson Harvey. And our last question for you, Christy, is what is bringing you joy right now? Um, we have a new puppy. His name is Salt. I am so obsessed with him. And Julie could not believe this when I told her, but I have never had a puppy. Never. Um, I mean, I've never had a dog. Like, we had cats growing up and I've never had a dog. So this is my very first dog ever. And he is just so sweet. I had no idea what I was missing. <laughs> Julie, I'm going to send you a picture after because I have a new puppy too. And, we can <laughs> oh, and I'm they can have play dates. 
<laughs> like so cute. Oh, that's amazing. So Salt, who is adorable, I've been seeing his pictures, is bringing you joy. And I think yesterday was National Puppy Day. It was. So, it was. I was so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, I can post about National Puppy Day because I have <laughs> National Puppy so Day. Great. Now you have a puppy. So that's amazing. I, I'm an only child, so I never get to post about National Sibling Day. Like there's a lot I'm left out of. So at least I got to do National Puppy Day. Now you've got all the dog <laughs> holidays to celebrate. All right. Well, thank you so much, Christy, for being with us. And we are delighted uh, about the wedding veil and hope everybody picks up a copy. So, well, thank you. And I can't wait for people to read the magic of lemon drop pie. Oh my gosh. I was telling you before that I have just been raving about this book. I got an early read of it and it's so fantastic. So I can't wait for everyone to get to check it out. Oh, thank you very much. All right. Well, thanks for being with us, Christy. And join us next week for more book talk fun.